Hello, everyone. You, too, can have a podcast. You have a passionate voice. You want to be heard. You can be inspiration to others. And it is super easy. You all know that I am not technical. So just download the Anchor app on your phone or go to anchor.fm and get started sharing your voice and inspiring the world. You know, I was going to try and do some sort of video podcast, but I couldn't figure it out. So I'm just coming to you audibly. (laughs) Sorry. All righty. Second day of Advent. How was Sunday? I don't know if you caught my videos. I didn't come sharing too much. I had a lot going on yesterday. The boys came over with their girlfriends. We had some chili, cornbread, some cheesy tortilla things. It was my husband's idea. They tasted really good. Great idea, sweetie. And it was just jam-packed. But I struggled immediately. I got up, went to Mass. I almost did not receive Holy Communion. Not because I wasn't in a state of grace. I just hadn't been to confession for like three weeks. And you all know that's a long time for me. Plus, the first day of Advent, I didn't do any preparation. I got in my car. I listened to the readings on the way. Attended, literally attended, and then talked myself into the reverence of the mass into worshiping, which I normally don't have to do. Why? Because I'm getting up and I'm preparing. That's kind of what this whole Advent is for. If you're going to mass just to go and you didn't do any reflection before, during, or after, then it's kind of like you just went in spite of yourself. I look at it like, hey, you're going. You might as well make the best of it. Why not take that time to reverently thank God and to put yourself in his presence and to start out your week on the right foot? But I received Because my idea was, well, I would rather have Jesus in me to start off this Advent season than not in me. And then I decorated. I decorated the day after Thanksgiving, which in some people's eyes, you should not do that. You should wait. That's what the whole Christmas season is about, is waiting until Christmas Eve, to decorate. And then when Jesus comes, it's the Christmas season and the celebration. And it continues on from there. But the culture practically has Christmas stuff hanging around in the stores during Halloween. It gets earlier and earlier and it blends before Thanksgiving even gets here. So I was listening to Father Michael Schmitz. You may know him. My mom sent it to me. She said, hey, you might want to listen to this too as I go about doing my videos for Advent. And he shared that Advent, we should be looking at it like it's the day that we're going to die because we're preparing to visit Jesus, to meet Jesus the first time in his first coming, but also on Judgment Day, the second coming. So I liked his idea of looking at your life and saying, huh, are you prepared to die? Maybe you need to look at Christmas as, okay, I'm going to meet Jesus and it's going to be my judgment. What do I need to fix in my life? And he went beyond the fasting. He went to perhaps reconciling yourself with someone. Maybe you are in a fight and have been in a fight with someone for a long time. We know the things that we need to correct in our life. 
So yesterday, I didn't listen to Father Mike until this morning. Yesterday, I put out on Facebook, if Jesus came to you today, the first Sunday of Advent, and said, I must stay in your home until Christmas, what would you change? And I want you to really think about that. If Jesus was going to come live with you for a while, immediately you would change some things. Because Jesus is not the one who changes. Everyone who's with Jesus is the one who changes. It's funny, some of the responses had to do with their house. Like, oh, I might clean. <laughs> I mean, like, I'm talking about cleaning your soul. I'm talking about the house of your heart. Maybe I should have said if Jesus came into the home of your heart, maybe that would have been different. But I was a little shocked at some of the superficial types of responses. Because what we really should be thinking about is I know immediately before Jesus found me, if I brought Jesus into my home, the first thing I would do would stop swearing. The second thing I would do is stop drinking and smoking <laughs> because Jesus is living with me. I certainly wouldn't be watching pornography. I wouldn't be watching hours and hours of Netflix. As a matter of fact, I'd be talking to him as much as I possibly could. Why wouldn't I want to spend every moment with Jesus instead of this worldly stuff? Would I literally have him in my kitchen and go put my face in front of my phone? I mean, come on, people. These are the kind of blatant questions we need to ask ourselves. It's not that difficult to prepare for Jesus is coming, which I guess if you want to look at it, preparing for the day you die. Because I'm telling you, if Jesus, Jesus came right now, I am not ready. I'm not ready. I'm excited for him to come. I want him to come. But I know I'm not ready. Because I'm not living the way that he commanded me to. And there are things I need to work on. All right, so yesterday, start out, the minute I wake up, <laughs> all I was doing was just regretting making the decision to work out. Why did I tell everybody I was going to work out every day? And then I started with the excuses. I'm, I was thinking, well, it's Sunday. Sunday is the big feast day. I shouldn't have to be looking at bodily mortification on this day. I could just skip this day and then start on Monday. Sound familiar, anyone? <laughs> so yes, that's how it works. So if yesterday, this is one of my favorite sayings, if it sucked and blew at the same time, which is physically impossible, you cannot suck and blow at the same time. But if that's how bad your day went yesterday, trying to get into the bodily mortification groove, that's okay. Just do it again today. This is the walk of life. Just because one day sucked and blew at the same time, and I know sucked isn't the great greatest word, but it works in this particular saying, don't let it stop you. That's life. It's a struggle. Just get back up, take yourself to reconciliation, confession, and go back to God. Start again. Start again the next hour if you went a little crazy on something or you didn't do your bodily mortification the way that you had hoped that you would do it. So I did. I worked out, I got down there, I ended up delivering spirits of laziness. I was in mass asking the Lord to fill me with his zeal, with his love, 
with his desire to move my body so that I could have more energy during the day. Came home, had a couple cups of coffee, and I kept pushing it off, pushing it off. I even went downstairs and I almost started a video about decorating your house, which I will cover in a moment. And I had to stop myself. If you watched my YouTube video yesterday, you'll see. I said, wait, 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 wait. I got to just do this workout. Otherwise, I will have another video and another half an hour will go by. And I will make an excuse not to do this at all today. So not only did I do it, but I picked a harder workout. I was just going to do this kind of pretty light, you know, stretching slash slight muscle building. But then I went into this Tracy Anderson method and it really kicks my butt. And when I say that, I literally, literally mean my butt cheeks were on fire, but they're sore today, which is good. That's what you want. I'm not incapacitated. I can do it again. And the more I work out, the less sore I will be. I know this because I've done this before. Your body adjusts. You're able to lift more, do more, walk more exercise more, have more energy. And then later on that day, oh, that was, sorry, I just kind of got lost with my thoughts. Those were my two mortifications. So I did the workout, plus I did a harder workout than I had planned. So I considered that a second one. And then my third one was not to have a glass of wine until I was all done cooking and preparing the food so that it was time for the kids to come in and eat. And I was going to take my moment with my glass of wine and just go relax, which I did. And it was great. Now today I didn't get up. I wanted to get up earlier and I was tired. So I slept in. I haven't worked out yet. I'm going to allow God to put these things in my heart. Excuse me. I think one of my mortifications today is getting out on that Cyber Monday sale stuff and just buy some stuff for the kids and their girlfriends. Those are the only people that we have on the list. And I just want to check it off the box because I don't want that hovering over me. And I don't really want to do it. I don't want to have that part of my advent. It's not about the gifts. So I want to kind of get that out of the way. That's going to be my second one today. So I don't know what my third one will be, but we shall see. And of course, I'm coming to you in videos. I haven't yet worked out. I'm saying I'm going to work out. It's just every day is different. But it's wonderful if we go back to God. I forgot to mention, and again, it's on my video, but if you noticed while you're doing something and you're not enjoying it, or if it's really causing you problems, let's say it's cleaning the house and you haven't done a top to bottom clean of your house. And the last thing you want to do is actually do it. As you're going through it, you're in the midst of it. You can't stop. Your whole house is kind of turned upside down and you're, you're hating every moment of it. And that is where you stop, you pause, you pray, you make it about God, because guess what? You have a house. You have a house. You have stuff to clean with. You have heat and air conditioning. Cleanliness is next to godliness. God doesn't want you to live in a filthy place. Work is good for the soul. Adam and Eve worked from the the very beginning. It's part of who we are. It's part of what we're made of. And work can be a prayer. It can be a moment of holiness. If we stop, we pause, we pray, we bring Jesus into it. Jesus, please help me clean this house. Please help me appreciate everything that you have blessed me with. Look, I got to clean my house top to bottom again. I had just cleaned it right before the dogs came over. And I didn't know we were going to have all three. So I clean it from top to bottom. I have three floors. We're talking vacuuming, washing the floors, all the bathrooms, every dust 
mirror, little trinket, knick-knacky thing. I mean, everything. <laughs> I've got to do it again from top to bottom just because of like the yuckiness of the dogs. I'm not looking forward to that, but I bet I am going to make it a beautiful moment, a beautiful time to appreciate what God gave me and taking care of what God gave me. Okay, what do you want to do today? If Jesus knocked on your door, what would be three things that you would do immediately? Because he's now in your home. Let that drive today. I'm pretty sure I wouldn't run away and go exercise (laughs) if Jesus came to my door. But I know that that's part of what makes me a better, more loving spouse. Taking care of this body, this holy temple that God lives in. It's a big deal for me because when I don't take care of it, I am not my best loving self to me, to my spouse, to anyone around me. And I need God for that. So today, I think my third one is going to be spiritual. I think I'm going to pray my rosary, my 40-minute rosary, sit down and let God really pour into my heart. All right. I hope that you don't already not want to do this. <laughs> That's the worst sentence structure ever. I I hope that because you had a bad day yesterday, you're not already saying forget this because that's not how life works. We know that. It's a get up every time we fall kind of deal. And even if you forgot yesterday or you didn't do anything yesterday, who cares? Just do it today and tomorrow and the next day. And before you know it, after 28 days, you may have control over your body in a whole new way if you keep up with it. That's the deal. If you keep going to God and if you keep paying attention, that's the cool thing. I thought about God every moment yesterday. I didn't even eat a bowl of chili yesterday. I just had one of those tortilla things with cheese and I put a little chili on top. I was really trying to not be piggish. I did have three glasses of wine, probably should have had two, but this is kind of what happens when you're in, when you're engaged in your day and you're really paying attention, you can reflect as you're in the middle of it. And then reflecting back is so much easier because you've already been paying attention. That is living in the spirit. All right, let's pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, I love you so much. Please fill us with your spirit. Fill us with temperance and self-control and love and generosity and kindness and forgiveness and mercy. Fill us with peace during these crazy time of times of Advent coming up to the most beautiful day ever, your birth. Please help us keep you in the center of our heart every day. That all of the things that we do, we do for the love of you, not for the cultural season. Because we are going to see you one day and we need to be prepared. Mind, body, soul. If you come into our house today, what is it that you want us to work on, Lord? Please put it in our heart and help us take action today. Help us live in today. Help us not live in the future and not Get overwhelmed with all of the things that we 
put on ourselves this season. Help us to prioritize you. Mary, we want to walk with you this Advent. We want to feel how you are as you approach the birth of God in your womb. Please guide us, lead us with your spouse, the Holy Spirit, with our guardian angels and the whole holy army. We need everyone's help. We seek it from you today. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, everyone. I love you all. Advent is an awesome season. Let's just continue to offer sacrifices to God. Oh, shoot. I forgot to tell you about what I was doing while I was working out. I went off. I hate it when I do that. And then I catch it right before I'm ready to let you guys go. I was working out. My butt was hurting so bad. I could barely lift my leg anymore to do the exercise. And I knew I had 20 more sets, 20 more reps. And I was like, how am I going to do this? That was when I called on God. So I brought Jesus in. I used it in the experience of cleaning the house, but I did it in the midst of my workout. I was going to give up. I was not going to lift my leg again because I didn't think I could until, of course, I called on Jesus and I said, I align this pain and this desire to give up to you on the cross. Jesus, you were in so much more pain. You hung on that cross for three hours. I can finish these leg lifts for you. That was what made the workout a prayer. So I'm bringing this up because there's a lot of things that a lot of us don't want to do. And when we do it complaining and moaning and moping and groaning, it becomes an anti-prayer. We become little pagans. But when we do what we're supposed to do and we do it without any whining and complaining and we offer it to God and we do it with love and gratitude and thankfulness, it's different. So think about that as you go through your mortifications today. Okay. Exciting. Oh, excuse me. Exciting to walk. Exciting to walk with you all. And I will come on video. Don't forget, go to my YouTube channel, Kendra Von Ash. Just search me in YouTube. I'll pop up. Or you can just do the at sign, Kendra Von Ash. That's also my tagline. You can find me that way. And I hope that everything goes well today. But again, like I said, just yesterday, it was not easy. And that's the whole point. Because Satan's out there not wanting us to get closer to God. So we've got to be smarter. And we have to have our weapons ready, pulled out of the quiver in our hands, ready to slash any of the evil that keeps us from preparing to see Jesus. All right, everyone. I love you all. Go find something more with God today. Have a beautiful first Monday of Advent. Hope it's blessed and inspired. Hello, I'm Kendra Von Esch, and you are listening to my 10-minute daily podcast, Reality Reflections. I bought into what this world said would make me happy. Money, prestige, power. And hey, if it feels good, do it, because life is stressful, so party hard. Do whatever makes you happy. But that didn't quite work out, because I felt even more insecure, full of fear shame and anxiety, and never, ever good enough. Then God found me and flipped my reality upside down and transformed my life. And I want this for everyone. So I left my executive career to help others find true acceptance, supernatural peace, joy, and love that only comes from a relationship with God. Here is my reality reflection for today.